Hey, what's going on YouTube? So we got to pick up a Marlin 1895 Trapper, kind of for free, coming up. All right, first things first, for those of you that think that bullets can travel through cameras, we are clear. I don't even actually own any ammunition for this rifle. It is 45, chambered in 4570 government. And uh, the gun store that I picked it up from did not actually have any in stock. So this rifle is actually quite desired. People are looking for it like crazy. I've seen them going for 2000 plus on gun broker. If you are paying more than $2,000 for this, um, why if you want it that bad and now uh, maybe i guess but uh, if you're a little patient you can save 500 or more um check out tombstone tactical they've been getting a few in uh, sporadically every week a couple weeks ago they got five of them in and uh, they were selling for much less than two thousand uh, dollars check out tombstone tactical they're my local gun store in Phoenix. So uh, let's get into how I kind of didn't have to pay for this, kind of. No, I am not sponsored by anybody. Uh, nobody sent this to me for free. Ruger didn't send this to me or Marlin uh, didn't send this to me for free for review or anything like that. Just look at my subscribers. You can tell nobody sends me anything for free at 3000 subscribers. So if you're a subscriber to this channel, you may have seen the short that I did a few weeks ago on my 66 Valiant. I'll throw that clip up right now so that you can see it. It's a minute or so. This is my 66 Plymouth Valiant. I sold this about eight years ago. It was in much better condition when I sold it. Now it's got different fenders on it. It's missing parts in the front end. It's got different wheels on the front that don't even roll. I had a set of chrome 13 inch wheels with it that I sold and a set of 14 inch aluminum slots. It's left with one chrome 13 inch wheel. This one was the spare for the 13 inch wheels. The trunk lid has been changed. Another wheel that was not on there, doesn't belong on there, doesn't roll. Fender looks terrible. That's not the fender that was on here and the engine has been torn apart. I got notified by the MVD that a tow yard had it and they were applying for an abandoned title. So I got the title back, went and picked it up and this is the conditions that it's in. It's uh, making me kind of sad. So that was my 66 Plymouth Valiant. In high school, I started, my first car was a 63 Plymouth Valiant. It had a slant six, 225 with a three speed on the tree. If you don't know what that means, it's a manual speed transmission. It's got three gears and you shift on the column. Very unique to uh, the younger generations. Um, I'm, I can't say that I'm a younger generation. Uh, I was born in 83 in high school in the late 90s, early 2000s. 63 Plymouth Valiant. Well, two weeks before graduation, I was showing off, peeling out in a parking lot, and lost control and stuck my 63 Valiant through a wall. Uh, my dad found a 66 Valiant, picked it up for $400. We took everything out of the 63 and put just about all of it into the 66, the engine, the rear end. We didn't do the transmission because my dad found a four speed out of the 67 Dart GT, which made it a little bit more fun to drive but I did miss the three on the tree. But anyway, ended up with the 66. So when I wrecked the 63, that was May, I think, of 2002. And it wasn't until, I believe, 2004 till I got the 66 running and drivable. So I drove the 66 for several years. Then I got my first Tacoma and had uh, the 2002 Tacoma for nearly 11 years, now my 2017 Tacoma. If you're subscribed to this channel, that's probably why is the Tacoma videos. Um, and so I had the Valiant not over, it didn't overlap the 2017 because I sold it in 2015. So I told, 
Sold my 66 Valiant in 2015. Well, recently I got a letter from the MVD saying that my car was at a tow yard and they were applying for an abandoned title. So I still had the number of the guy that I sold it to because he was texting me some pictures of the rebuild and doing stuff like that. And so I contacted him and he's like, well, I sold it to somebody else. I'm like, okay, well, that's weird. Uh, so couldn't get in contact with them. I contacted the tow yard and they're like, oh yeah, it's really nice. And I'm like, okay, so I got kind of excited. Maybe they were restoring it and building it or whatever. And maybe I could go and pick it up and it was really nice. So I went to the MVD, got the title, since it was still in my name, after, as for, after it going through a couple people's different hands, nobody transferred the title. So, and I, and here in Arizona, if you abandon a vehicle, like if they apply for title and get it, you pay $500 uh, the next time you go to register a vehicle. I didn't want to do that. So I went, picked up the title, went out to pick up the car. Well, you can see the condition that the car was in in that short video. It was not in good condition. So I don't know what that lady's definition of nice was. Anyway, I paid the 350 bucks in storage fees and towed it home. It was not in running condition. It's not drivable. It doesn't even roll because the wheels on it are mismatched and, and won't even work on there. Um, so it was in pretty rough shape. I didn't want to do anything with it. Maybe if it was in equal condition when I sold it, which was drivable, it ran, it drove, it, w it had different fenders on it. It was, and it had... 14-inch uh, aluminum slots on it, which are really hard to find, but it wasn't in that condition. So I didn't even want to mess with it, so I listed it for sale. Well, I was able to sell it. I took some of that money, I put it aside in case I needed it for bills, and I used it to get the Marlin 1895 Trapper. So that was a very long-winded way of saying I got an old car back, sold it a second time for funds that I was not anticipating having. So I wanted to get something that I was highly unlikely to want to get rid of or sell. And this was it. I apologize if I got a little boring with my story about the car, but that's how we got the Marlin 1895 Trapper with funds that I did not expect to have. I don't have any intentions of making it tactical or anything like that with the M-Lock uh, hand guards or the stock or anything like that. Um, they have some pretty cool stuff. I do like the looks of those, but I also like the way that this looks right out of the box. I like the Skinner sights on here. Uh, I, so I don't even know if I'm gonna put any sort of red dot or scope on here. I might just keep it with these sights. The only two things that I might do to it is get a muzzle brake. I think I'm going to go with the Ranger Point Precision muzzle brake. And then I may or may not get, see if I can get like a leather sling strap that I can put extra rounds in. Um, I would want probably like a black or a gray that's closer to this, not brown because there's no brown on here. I think that those are the only two things that I may do, may do to it. The muzzle brakes are definite. Uh, most likely going to go to uh, Ranger Point Precision. There's another company that I'm kind of considering, but I can't find any images on them. Uh, those brakes are from Grizzly Gunworks. The DEFCON 1 Lite is one that I'm considering, um, or I might just go with the one from Razor, Ranger Point Precision. The 1895 Trapper has the 16.1 inch barrel. I liked the shorter overall rifle, the shorter overall length uh, compared to the SBL. The SBL is a little bit longer. Then they also have the guide gun, which it has like a brown stock. It's a little bit different in appearance. I liked the Trapper and so that's what I wanted to go with. And so I am excited to have this and hopefully I get to shoot it in the new near future. Um, every time I pull the trigger, it's probably gonna be like $2. So 
So that's gonna be fun. But uh, if this is your first time to the channel, I'm a do-it-yourselfer. I don't do just gun videos. I've been doing gun videos lately because guns are a huge passion of mine and I do do my own things to them. Uh, I don't take things and pay a gunsmith when I can do them myself, but it's the same thing around the house. I've installed my own solar system. Uh, I've done plumbing and electrical and all that kind of stuff because I can't stand to pay somebody when I'm capable of doing it myself. So if you're into that kind of stuff, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you like gun videos, give the video a like so that you can let YouTube know that you want to see more of this kind of content and support it. Uh, I have a Rumble page as well, and you can see a little bit more content over there, stuff that I'm not allowed to show on YouTube because R Rumble is not uh, anti-firearms yet. So um, you can check me out there as well. And so I guess that's it for this video on how I was able to get my 1895 Trapper for free, kind of. So I guess we will catch you on our next project. See ya.